All right, today we are making crock pot candy. This is very versatile and I'm gonna show you how so. It is very good to have for the winter as a snack if you're having hot chocolate or coffee or tea. Um, it's good any time of year. We think of snacks like this during, for the holidays, uh, Christmas, whatever holiday you celebrate, or winter time. Um, you know, our family uh, plays cards every Monday night as much as we can if something else doesn't come up. And this would be a good card night snack or a game night snack. So I'm gonna go over the ingredients, but I want to sh tell you how it's versatile as well. I will write the correct recipe uh, down uh, on my website. So I will have a link in the description box down below. You can just click on that link and it'll take you to the website. Also, this recipe will be in one of my future cookbooks that I am working on about uh, holiday and special occasion recipes. So let's get started. I've got it jotted down on this old piece of paper from, um, well, about 20 years ago. <laughs> uh, we do have a crock pot and they sell these crock pot liners. Uh, I like to use these. In the past, I've used these, but I'm trying to save money and save ingredients, save product and that kind of thing. So I pick and choose when I use these. For example, Mr. Patient made Rotel dip the other day and that this is an excellent use for that um, recipe because that's hard to clean the crock pot. These are PBA free, by the way, so they're, they're okay to use, but in this case, we just won't use those. But I wanted to point those out. The first ingredient is three pounds of white almond bark. Now, this is the stuff you can find uh, year round, but especially during the holiday season. And um, some people call it white chocolate, which technically it's really not. <laughs> But you can find this. I got this at Dollar General because I don't shop Walmart or Amazon. But you can get it at the grocery store, your IGA, or wherever. So I need three pounds of white chocolate. I have my um, scales here. And I'm just going to put this on here. Now, here's the thing. Uh, like I said, I'm giving you the original recipe over on my website. And I'm telling you the original recipe but I'm also mixing and matching what I have because I've got a dib of this and a dab of that and it is absolutely fine to do that. Okay, also I have this bulk chocolate that was just, I got it uh, into the season last year and it's, you know, got so much sugar and <laughs> it's preserved. So I'm gonna use that to add to my white chocolate measurement. And then I've got this white chocolate baker's premium baking bar that i got at an amish uh, surplus store so i'm going to add that on here and see where we are on our measurements and i'm needing three um pounds so we are just two ounces from having three pounds of white chocolate so we are going to call that good what i'm going to do is just put all that white chocolate in the crock pot does not take a long time. Uh, I think about a total of not more than three hours total. And it will burn if you don't follow the directions. Just putting it all down in there. I'm actually going to put this on the bottom and lay these other pieces on top. There we go. It calls for a four ounce bar of German chocolate. Now that would be this entire box, but I only have half of the box, <laughs> so I'm going to have to make it up with um, another chocolate, and that doesn't bother me at all. All right, I'm going to go with this semi-sweet bar that I need to use up. All right, after that German chocolate, our next step is the semi-sweet chocolate chips, and I need 12 ounces, which is usually a bag, but I buy them in bulk, so I'm going to weigh out 12 ounces. I want to show you too, there's these dark chocolate bars from Aldi that I love. Um, then there are these wafers that is the same thing as this bark. 
So if you can't find one this holiday season, maybe you can find the wafers. Uh, it's not really chocolate chips. It is meant as a coating bark, like if you're making candy or chocolate um, dipped pretzels. So let's go ahead and weigh out 12 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips. All right, scales, having scales, there, exactly. It's so important in the kitchen. It's very, very good to have scales for so many different jobs. All right, I'm gonna add those chocolate chips. And then the last thing we're gonna put in here is 32 ounces of dry roasted peanuts. Again, I do not have the dry roasted peanuts and I do not have 36 ounces. So I'm doing 16 ounces of cocktail peanuts. And then to that, I am also using these 10 ounces of mixed nuts. But you can do whatever nuts you want. I mean, you could leave it out leave the nuts out if you wanted. You could also add coconut if you wanted to. That's not in the original recipe, and I don't add it because Mr. Patient doesn't care for coconut, and you know, we I want to please him, and he's the number one eater I want to please in the family. So um, you could add coconut at this point if you wanted to, and at the end, if you wanted to um, use marshmallows, um, I might show you an example of what I'm talking about here after this is done. So right now, we are going to move the crock pot to the outlet, turn it on high for 45 minutes, and do not lift the lid. Don't peek or stir or touch it at all. to show y'all while we're waiting on the crock pot that we do have these Heritage Ways Kill the Television magnets, three inches by three inches, made here in the United States, actually over in the Rocky Mountains by a, um, a, a couple, family-owned business. We have other magnets as well, but since I mentioned playing cards a while ago, I wanted to let you know in case you didn't weren't aware or haven't heard that we do have these magnets and they make great gifts. You can mail them in the mail, mail them in a Christmas card or a greeting card, and um, you know just just inexpensive to send to somebody or to have on your refrigerator or washer or dryer or other magnetic surface at home. Link is down below for more information and also on our website. All right, it has been our 45 minutes on high. We are not gonna open it. We are going to turn it on low. I'm gonna turn the timer on for 30 minutes because I'm going to cook it for another hour and a half on low, but I'm gonna stir it every 30 minutes. Usually what I do with this so that I don't forget what I'm doing, I may um, write on a piece of paper. If I've got too many things going on, I have to do this because I don't always trust myself to remember my timing, but I will write it on a piece of paper, you know, what is an hour and a half from now, and I will put the timer on to, for 30 minutes and I will stir it every 30 minutes until the chocolate is melted and then it's done and I'll show you what we're gonna do after that. All right, so it has been 30 minutes, my first of my hour and a half. And the first time I've stirred it since I set it over here. So we are just gonna stir it up. Now remember, it can burn if you don't, you know, follow my directions. Um, you don't want to burn chocolate because you have to throw it away if you burn it, it's nasty. So I'm just stirring this up and try to separate, make sure there's not big clumps of chocolate sitting beside each other helps it out. We might not need the last 30 minutes because your goal is you just want all the chocolate to be melted. It doesn't have to really cook. So I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to 30 more minutes. All right, the 30 minutes is up. So let's take a look and see. I bet the chocolate is completely melted. Yes. Now I see it starting along the edge. Can you see that? To kind of not burn, but 
the beginnings of burning <laughs> where it kind of can't describe it but it's just kind of stuck to the edge lacy looking rather than creamy looking that's the best way to describe it and you know what in my case today the chocolate is melted I'm gonna stir it all around to get my my arms in your way sorry but to get my white and my dark chocolate mixed together but it is melted and that took an hour rather than an hour and a half which is what the original recipe says so we're going to turn it off bring it over here to my little butcher block i want to show you how it's intended to be made into the bite-sized candy right now the way it's intended is uh to take your just drop spoonfuls of it onto your um, parchment. And I do use parchment lined cookie sheet. So that is the way it's intended. Now, because I like to find shortcuts and ways to make my life easier, I actually do something different. But this is what you can do. You can let the kids help. And that's just fine to do it like that. Okay? Now, you could also take it and put it on top of, um, you know, marshmallows like that if you wanted to, or even chow mein noodles, or, you know, you can use your imagination. Like I said, quite honestly, in real life, <laughs> I um, pour it on my cookie sheet, and then I break it apart like bark, and you have um, little broken apart squares, so it is a matter of preference. That is how I do it. So I'm about to pour this on top of the marshmallows on the entire pan. And then I will let it cool and then I'll break it apart. All right, it's already starting to solidify a little bit, so I'm gonna need a spoon to get it out. And that's okay, it's not too hard to work with at this point, but like I said, this is how I do it. You can put it, um, you know, you can let it cool at room temperature and harden, and it will. But you can also put it in the fridge or the freezer if you want it to cool um, faster. And like I said at the beginning, you don't have to use these marshmallows. Uh, but you can. You could put them on top, that kind of thing. Also, what I like with um, chocolate like this is I like Celtic sea salt. The salt or the uh, the saltiness mixed with the sweetness of the chocolate I really like. So you could sprinkle that on top, which I probably will here in a minute. So I will finish working on this. Kind of spread it out on my cookie sheet. And then I'll sprinkle it with the sea salt and I will let it come to, I will let it cool, might even put it in the fridge. And then I'll break it apart and have it ready to eat or share or give as gifts. Something else you could do is I have seen chocolate for sale at the store and it had pepper flakes in it too so really use your imagination or your taste preferences this is just celtic sea salt you could also pour this over broken up pretzels if you have pretzels at the end of your bag and they're all broken uh, you could pour this on top also and add pretzels to your crock pot candy all right i have my pan of candy and I'm gonna break it up a little bit. It's not as uh, firm as it can be, uh, but I went ahead and took it out because we're gonna um, take a little bit to a friend's house tonight. See, there are the marshmallows, and you just break it apart into whatever size pieces you want. And, or, you know, if you wanted it thinner, you just put it on a bigger pan or two pans. I hope you'll try the easy and versatile crock pot candy this fall and winter. I'll talk to you next time. Be blessed and count your blessings. See you next time. Bye-bye.